Welcome back. My name is Shira. Today we'll be using cereal box and some basic craft supplies to make beautiful pots and pans. For painting, you can use nail polish or some regular acrylic paint. To start, I cut my cereal box into strips. I chose three quarters of an inch, one half inch, and one quarter inch. I'm making 112 scale pots. What I want to do is take these straight pieces of chipboard, which is what cereal box is made out of, and wrap the strip tightly around a pen or a marker or whatever you have. I'm doing this to give the cereal box some memory to hold a round shape. I do this with all three strips and I end up with three nice tight coils. Here's a step I would actually skip, but I'll show you what I did. I used my X-Acto knife to cut a shallow mark in this chipboard and peeled a layer or two off. My intention was to create a smaller seam when I glue the ends of my chipboard around itself to create a circle, but my unintended consequence was creating this little point from where I had cut the line. So just keep it simple and glue your two uncut ends over each other to create a freeform round shape. This will make up the walls of our pot. I like this technique because I don't have to hunt around my house for items that have the correct diameter. I can make whatever size pot I want. If you're not sure what size to make your pots and pans, find the item you'll be using them with and you can create your shape right in place. If you plan to display them on a shelf or piece of furniture, make sure they'll fit. Have you ever made a miniature that turns out to be the wrong size? Because I know I have. These are the finished sides of two pots and one pan. To create a bottom for these, I'll use another strip of cereal box. I laid down a ring of glue and plopped my pot into it. You could also apply your glue to the bottom of the pot. It's a little bit messy with some extra glue, so I used a paintbrush to clean up the excess. I'm always using paintbrushes to clean up excess glue and then I forget about them and leave them on my desk and then I have to soak them later. So make sure you clean up your brush after you do this. While my bottoms dry, I will draw some handles for my pots. I made mine about three quarters of an inch long. I drew a part where your hand would hold and then this little rectangle you see is where the handle will attach to the pot. I want this little rectangle to look like it's riveted to a pot like you see on full size pots. So I tried this technique where I used some more cereal box behind my handle and pressed an indent with a pen. This would work better with a ball stylus on a piece of foam but this is what I had available and I think it makes a pretty good effect. To make the handle smooth and give it some dimension I used some Dollar Tree wood glue. I learned this cool trick from Aira from Bentley House Minis during her abandoned coffee shop project. I created a different shape for my pot handles. I used my scissors to bend the handle toward me where the two parts will meet the pot. And then I used my pen just to give a rounded shape to this handle so when it sits against the pot it projects and doesn't just sit flat. I use the same technique of covering this with wood glue. This technique doesn't work with white glue because the white glue flattens and doesn't hold its shape. I made two of these and set them aside to dry. To create the pot lids, I found a circle object that was close to the size I needed and then I cut outside of the line I created to make the lid a little bigger so it will fit my pot. To keep the lid from sliding off the top of the pot, I glued a smaller diameter circle underneath the lid. If you choose to add this second circle, it needs to be a smaller diameter than the inside diameter of your pot. I added some wood glue to the top of my lids and tried to flatten it out as best I could, but this wood glue is pretty self-leveling, so then I set that aside to dry. To create the handles, I squeezed some hot glue onto plastic and did this little circle motion so I'd end up with some round orbs. Now that my pot bottoms are dry, I cut these apart so they look like little graduation caps. And then I cut nice and tightly against the side of the pot to cut away the bottom. I sanded the edges of my pot where the bottom meets the sides to make sure there isn't a lip there. You can also use a nail file or emery board for this. 
Once the glue is dry on your handles, you can attach them to the pot. Pay attention when you attach these because you want them to be directly across from each other and also at the same height on the pot. For the frying pan, I glued the handle where the seam is. I wanted to disguise the seam a little bit and I didn't want it to fall on the side of my frying pan. I placed the saucepan handle in the same spot. This is completely optional because my cereal box is already really smooth, but I covered the outside of my pots with some more wood glue. I also coated the handles and the inside of the pots with more wood glue for a smooth finish. The lids are dry and you can see the smooth dimensional finish the wood glue gives them. Now for the hot glue handles, I just used a little bit of white glue to attach them. I struggled a little bit when I was holding my pots and painting them with glue, so I came up with a clever solution. I attached some colored pencils with some hot glue to the tape. I wanted the tape as a barrier so it'll be easy to remove without damaging my pots. Now I can hold on to the pencil instead of the pots while I paint. I'm doing a three-part paint process. I tried to paint my color directly onto the pot, but you can see the graphics from the cereal box through it. So I changed tactics and decided to give everything a base coat of black paint. For some of you, this may be your final coat, but I'm using silver to cover up the darkness of the black and give a lighter base for my final coat. For the final coat, I'm retaining the silver of the faux metal riveted part and painting the rest of the pot my blue color. Use the side of the brush to paint the rim. My largest stock pot will get a coat of blue paint and the handles will stay black. I love when cookware has white inside. I think it's ceramic or enamel. So I'm painting the insides white and I'm giving it two coats. These are all looking fantastic and now it's time to remove them from their pencils. The pencil just pops right off and I peel off the tape and paint the bottoms black. I painted the bottom of my lids white. You can still see some of the graphics through the white paint, but that's okay. I should have kept my pots on my pencils a little longer because I still needed to coat these with some gloss Mod Podge to add more shine. And then I used another Mod Podge product that I absolutely love. This is Dimensional Magic by Mod Podge. I used this to great effect in my cottage video and here I'm using it to add some additional dimension and shine to my handles. If anyone is curious, this is a vintage German Bodo Hennig stove and I made my spaghetti using some really thin pieces of styrene painted yellow. Bye bye